What's going on, everybody? It's Josh Wilson, and I'm back in the Big Dog Podcast. And I just realized I'm recording our second live episode today in the studio, and I'm wearing the same outfit. We've done this before, and I always insist on an outfit change because I'm a little high maintenance and dramatic, and I almost started saying something during the intro. Jonathan's looking at me like, what's wrong with me? And I realized I'm just looking. Here's the thing. Every day, I'm wearing the same clothes anyway, damn near. Typically, it's just the gray shorts and a black T-shirt. So I don't know why I worry about that. But even the hat change would have been a nice touch. I mean, you said on our uh, on the episode that we did earlier today, you were like, yeah, I mean, got to impress the three. I'm kidding, five YouTube viewers. <laughs> you didn't have to tell the five YouTube viewers. I know, I know. Well, here you go, YouTube. Now you know. And they're like, Josh... We've seen you in that shirt at least 30 times. So, I mean, it is what it is. So I have a couple of them. Find stuff I like. I like it. My wife, like her. She's been around for a minute. So, got Jonathan Mack in the studio. Jonathan, what's up, buddy? Hanging out like usual. Just hanging out like usual. And then I've got another special guest in the studio today. A longtime friend of mine. We were trying to figure this out. We think we go back to 2010 is what we're thinking here. And we've been on some interesting adventures together over the years Uh, but i've got my good friend tim ryan in the studio and tim is the executive director of start wheel and we're going to talk a lot about that today and some other thing that tim is into other things and family but tim welcome to the big dog podcast yeah man thanks for having me how's everything been life is good life is good so you're in an interesting phase right now your kids are kind of a little bit ahead of mine and then in between mine i think so Madison, where where is she at? She's a sophomore at JMU. Which is bonkers to right, me. Right. And Drew's what year is Drew? He is a junior. Junior. Yeah, so he they are right head. So Logan's a senior. Kiki's a sophomore. So how how has that transition gone? Because like you and Terry, like just if you guys don't know the Ryans, they're a super fun family. They're always down for a good time. Their kids really enjoy hanging out with them. So, like, there's some secret recipe they've designed over these years that you don't see a lot of times with, like, families and, and teens. But, like, your teens like you guys. Or is it all we fake? I like to think so. Is yeah. it all social media BS? No, no. no I, you know, and I haven't even been on social media in forever. I know. You know because so many people do just, uh, you know, it's the best of. Uh, yep. Yeah, we keep everything real. No, I think that from the time that they were kids, we always treated like treated them like adults. Yeah. So, uh it was, it's nothing new for them. So That's we so just fun. Grow up together. How's JMU going? Everything good? Yeah, everything's great. It, uh, yeah. Is she yeah, loving it? She does love it. Yeah. Devin and I had a good time there. I, I, I can see fun. why. It, uh, it's a great place. There's always something going on. There is. It's beautiful, too. The it campus is. is incredible. Yeah, it sure is. And so Drew's a junior. Yep. And how has that transition been like from having, you know, the big sister in the house? Now it's like, hey, it's just me. He's still in his room. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just one of those things. It's like, hey, Drew, yeah, we, we send food up. He eats right. his food. He comes back down, grabs more food, and uh, goes to school, goes for a run, does whatever he does. But, That's uh, so funny. Yeah, he's a pretty independent guy. So just to, the, the briefest way I can kind of describe my friends, the Ryans, is we were, um, this past weekend, we were shuttling Kiki's crew to homecoming. And we were taking the the fifteen passenger van that we have with with all of our friends, and you know we're like, man, Devin goes, oh, I wish I had a disco ball to hang from the the ceiling, and she goes to me, Devin says, I wonder if the Ryans have a disco ball. I said, oh, sweetheart, it's an absolute guarantee that they have a disco ball. And we did not disappoint. No, Devin came back to the house, Jonathan. With bags of options, bags of options. There's disco balls that illuminate. There's the standard old school disco ball from the string that just reflects. There's this one with like rotating lasers, like a prism that rotates. And that's the one we went with. That's the real good time one. Uh, Strobe light was thrown in there. Oh, yeah. Strobe lights, these like sticks that like change colors. It did not. When you. Look up the definition of over deliver. What happened Saturday afternoon is like the visual definition of over deliver. I feel like it might be like a buzzkill type of question, but why so many disco balls? 
dude. We've we've had a lot of a lot of parties in the day, and the crazy <laughs> thing is, is that we've got boxes of stuff. Right. I mean, yeah. So if you need wigs, if you need yeah. masks, horse head mask, you. I mean, yeah. We've got too much stuff from. They throw really great parties. Really great parties. They're wonderful hosts. And it's always a good time at their house. And that's why they have 53 disco balls. <laughs> but here's the thing. So now you take this great setup, the great party people, they've got the disco balls. We come and pick them up. So now they're in the hands of the Wilsons, right, who don't have a disco ball. And so we, <laughs> we, we take this thing, we get it set up in the van. And I got it plugged in. We had to figure it out, you know, to power it, to, to go. And, and that was no big deal. How come, though, one of the girls, I feel so bad, one of the girls had an incident a couple weeks ago, okay? And um, she had a lot of light sensitivity mm. after her accident, concussions, things like that. Like, she's been wearing sunglasses all the time. Uh, Dev and I are just cranking the music. We got the stereo thumping. We got the party lights going, the strobes, everything. And this girl's just in the, uh, you know, we didn't realize because after about like 10, 15 minutes, I think Kiki said, Hey, can we, can we, can we kill the lights? And we're like, Oh, yeah, that's kind of like lame or whatever. Buzz kill, yeah. yeah. We definitely did not give consideration to the fact that one of the kids was being a very good sport and probably was feeling like complete crap. Mm. And that is typical Wilson approach to things. This is going to be great. Everybody will love it. <laughs> Kid having freaking trauma in the back <laughs> of the van. It was cool, though. You know what they say. Give a man a disco ball. He dances for an evening. <laughs> <laughs> Teach a man how to set it up. He dances for a lifetime. You're ridiculous, Jonathan. Um, but anyway, it was a really good time. And, you know, coming in the clutch were the Ryan. So we, we appreciated it. Glad and, we could help. And so earlier this week, I was sitting there thinking about some stuff. And, and you guys have been on our mind. Just appreciate y'all helping us out with that. And I said, man, Tim and I have talked about doing different shows together for pff, probably three years now yeah. at this point. Yeah. And I was like, let me just shoot my man a text and see what's up. I had an opening, maybe a random chance. And typically when that's worked out in the studio, they've been some of the best shows. Nobody overthinks anything. We just get in and have a good time. And it, it worked. And so yeah. here you are. Yeah, glad to be here, man. I, I just driving in. I'm like, man, we haven't talked in so long. There's so much we could talk about. 100%. So, super happy to be yeah, here. Yeah, it's cool. So, you know, our show has a, a lot of different listeners, a lot of different backgrounds and stuff like that. But overwhelmingly, we've got, you know, entrepreneurial minded people. We have small business owners, um, you know, all levels really of business and different industries and stuff. But a lot of people that we hear from and talk to or people are on that path of, I mean, they're getting started or they're wanting to get started or mm -hmm. they have, they have that vision. We talk about vision a lot on the show and, and they don't really know what to do or, or next steps. And while we have listeners all over the place, a, a large part of our people are local. That's, that's our reach and how we're known through my businesses. Talk about, and I, I just, I've always thought what you do is fascinating and what your organization does. So I really wanted to jump in and talk about that a little bit. You know, yeah. Start Wheel and, and what's Start Wheel about? What do you guys do over there? Um, who do you serve and, and how can that help people? Yeah, I mean, we uh, do starting a business is tough, you know, and there's a lot of people that offer help, but it's like, unless you've been there, unless you've gone through the grind, yeah. unless you know what the struggle is of, man, am I going to make payroll? What, right. you know, what A lot of things come into play. So we provide that resource in the sense of, hey, this is what you need to know. Yeah. We're going to break down all the barriers for you. Here are the people you need to talk to. These are the things you need to think about. And uh, I'll... I'll I always make time for founders, man. They're founders are that's what I'm all about. So yeah, making that's cool. time, giving them love, showing them the way, man. And uh That's awesome. It's a fun ride. And so, you know, you're helping people go from concept yep. to application literally through that process. Yeah. I mean, we uh from hey, I've got an idea. Is this worth pursuing? Yeah. Teaching them how to pitch their business. They're looking to raise money. We'll we'll go even further. Yeah, you know, we'll oh, talk wow. about how many customers you have. What's your month over month growth? What's your revenue looking like? What's your uh, you know what's that trajectory? Uh, and and I mean we've had companies raise thirteen million, twenty five million. Wow. Uh, 
Yeah. That's awesome. So that's, that's really cool because I, people do not know, like people do not know about resources like that. They don't even know where to begin as far as that goes. And so many businesses, um, I mean, hell, I've I've been through it, experience it, and hopefully we'll experience it again. You know, right. the, you'll you'll hit, you'll get that start, and it's tough and it's difficult. Then you hit a phase where it's like, man, things are going pretty well. Right? right? We we're we're making some money. This is weird. And then you realize, oh, okay, if we're going to continue to grow, I'm actually not making any money because I need to put that money into hiring more people. Right. I need to put that into more inventory. I need to put that into. Um, research and development. I need, so I'm not really making more. We've created more, but we are very quickly going to stall out. Right. If we don't repurpose those funds or figure out how to raise. That's right. Right. And so most founders, maybe you would disagree with this. I mean, you're the expert, particularly in this part, but I believe most of your founders are good tacticians. And they're not necessarily the the business owners. Most people are like, hey, I was a whatever. Right, right. And I'm going to do this on my own. But there's a lot of skills that they have to develop and they're capable of developing. Sure. But that a lot of people are coming in from the tactical standpoint, not the business, business right. growth, yeah. right? And that's where I got started was, yeah, there's a lot of technical people out there, people really good at whatever their skill set is. Yeah but they don't know how to put a business around it. Mm-hmm. So if I can help you put a business around it, then we'll all be successful. That's yeah. how everything got started. But yeah, so you're absolutely right. Huh? Yeah. So like for me, it's, you know, I'm always the, uh, the idea guy. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm the, the visionary. And so there's always big picture stuff. There's always, um, you know, I, not blindly optimistic, but like I see, I see potential. The, the fear isn't paralyzing to me of the unknown. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, we're going to figure this out. You right. know, Let, let's, let's go. And as businesses grow, though, early on, it was easy for me to just kind of be that person. But I had to start filling holes with people that had those skill sets where there's the, the implementation of these ideas. Yeah, It's like, okay, if you're going to get to that point – Okay, it's good that you have that idea, but but we need someone to come in and execute. It's all execution on these things. All execution. And because if I get bogged down in the execution, which which there's seasons in everyone's business where you have to right. step back into those things, um, I I go crazy because that's not the stuff I'm passionate about. That's not the stuff that's exciting to me. You know, if I need a dog in my hand to train, right. some days I need that fix, and I can just go do it. It lets my mind kind of clear. But then I got to get back on to, okay, how can we help more families? How can right. we impact more dogs? How can we, you know, teach people that this is a opportunity to make a living in a different way than the school systems teach and things like that. And they can do well and create a great quality of life. You know, that's the type of stuff I want to impact. And if I'm caught up in the weeds of things every minute of every day, I can't focus on those things, right. get burnt out and stuff like that. So when people are coming to you, sounds like not just in that startup phase, but they have a business that's been going and, and operating. Now they need to, they can come to you to source funding sure. to help yep. do pitch decks and yep. all those things. Yep. That's great. So who makes up start wheel? Like who, who do y'all have like advisory bo- Like who, who is, yeah I, yeah, I have a board, but it's okay. essentially me. That, okay. Uh, I, I run it by myself. We're a, a nonprofit. Yeah. That uh, is trying to help founders. But yeah, we have a great board and it, yeah, it's a mix of founders, uh, other organizations that help, uh, 757 Angels, 757 Accelerate. Oh, yeah. So all different people that have uh, different hands in that pot to, to make that big engine run. That's Just, cool. Uh, but yeah, it's all execution, man. And uh, it, it's super sexy to say, Hey man, I want to, yeah, I'm, I'm raising money. Right. But man, what people don't realize is there's many different ways to raise money. But because right. I tell everybody it's like, you want to raise money, you're jumping on a treadmill, you're setting that thing to 10 and you start running and you can't come off that thing, no matter uh-huh. how tired you get, nope. because you're now working for your investors. That's right. And, and they want to return. That's right. So think about that before you do a hundred percent. It's like, well, this is how I like to do it. Ooh, well, 
it's it's not just your opinion anymore. And that's if you can raise money. If and you there's can, there's a lot of there's a lot of work that has to be done in order right. to to raise money. Sure. And so talk about maybe that process a little bit because I got to imagine um, the people who are let's call them the, the investors. Well, they mm-hmm. are the investors or like the start the angel investors things yep. of that nature. They're being presented with ideas nonstop. Yep. And what's the percentage, would you say, ballpark, of ideas they're presented with versus the ideas that they actually step in and fund? Yeah. Small, small. Very, right? Very, very, very small. Yeah. And, yes, yeah, since we've last talked, gosh, I, you know, I've invested in 30-plus companies. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, you're competing against everybody. Right. So, like, now we're in this post-COVID Zoom world, man, so you're now – you're, you're pitching to people all over the world. So yeah. Likewise, I'm hearing pitches from wow. all over the world as well. So you've got to be on your game. This huh. isn't you just competing against whoever in Hampton Roads right. or even in Virginia. You're competing against... It's global. Yeah. That's incredible. And the thing that's funny is everybody's idea is that amazing, big time, this is the one idea yeah. to, to them. And it's all about execution. To, to them. Yeah. And that's, that's funny. So what are, is there a, a certain industry more so that you find, because as this thing has grown over these, because gosh, I mean, how long have you been doing this now with Startwheel? Uh, just over three years. Yeah. I've been, yeah. I've been in the op- entrepreneurial game for, gosh, over a decade. Right. Yeah. 12 years now. Yeah. Okay. But Startwheel specifically the last three years yeah. or so. Yeah. So is there, a, wow, what an interesting time also though. For that, so if you kick this off in 2019, right, and then the world disappeared, yep, you know, 15 months later for a period of time. Wow, what an interesting time! Yeah, because, who, very interesting because there was a lot of money coming in too, a lot of a lot of money being doled out, a right. lot of people. Very interesting. Valuations went way way uh huh, and now uh, we're back to reality. Interesting. So talk about what type of, because I have a couple clients um, who are in like the VC side and they kind of have the sectors Mm -hmm. that are interesting to them, right? This is the world that I like to invest in. This is, I feel that I'm an expert and I can add a lot of value here. So that's what they do. So the start wheel kind of have that zone where it's like, these are people that we've helped and, and they're telling other people like, Hey, you need to go talk to Tim over at start wheel. And you start finding yourself kind of coning into certain industries or are you pretty broad? Uh, Yeah. Start wheel is pretty broad. I mean, me, my sweet spot. I really like tech. I like software as a service. So any SaaS type business, uh, yeah, I, that's what I like. But from a start wheel standpoint, yeah. If if you've got, a dream, you've got some hustle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then yeah, we'll talk. That's awesome. Um, that's really, really cool that it's broad. And I guess when it first started, was it primarily Hampton roads based businesses? Is it still yeah. primarily yeah, Hampton it roads? It is, but I mean, but it's grown. I mean, it's uh, slowly, you know, Richmond catches wind, right. uh, Northern Virginia and, and you know, really statewide. A lot of people have started to pay attention. You know, they're like, that's wow, cool. what's going on? But that's the whole point. Yeah. How, so how, when, what led you to this? What, what spurred that need where you're like, you know what, this is something that, that people need. I'm going to focus and go all in on this. Yeah. It's a, uh, so from a time and passion well, standpoint, yeah, I started my business and that was to help founders put yeah. a business around ideas. And then I was asked to uh, create a, a business incubator for the greater Williamsburg area. Yeah. I remember that. Did that. Uh, and then start wheel, uh, had previously started. I was a board member, okay. uh, and then they asked me to to come on board and, and run the organization. Which was, yeah, we have a need. We have right. 1.7 million people in this area. Everybody, yeah. There's so many universities. There's so many right. different state programs, federal programs, local programs. Everybody's trying to help out, and we are just we take input from everybody. We uh, and we'll just. I'll point people to wherever they need to go. This this is who you need to talk to. This is the best person for you. Go talk to them, and uh, we'll get it figured out. That's awesome. So you guys are are helping them, whether it's you know recommendations on banking relationships, accounting, 
um, development, if it's software, yeah. I mean, it, it, all that type of stuff. Yeah, we're definitely building community. I yeah. mean, it's just like you look at like Seattle and the grunge days right. or you know, blues. Uh, I, mean, I mean, all these big things that all happen around community. So yeah. we're building that community where founders can talk to founders. You can bounce ideas off of one yeah, another. That's cool. You find different uh, you know, people to help to partner with, to help you out. You can find customers, you can find funding sources. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of community building, giving founders a platform where they can, uh, Hey, we just closed around round of funding. We just opened up a new location. Right. We just released this particular product, you know, so it's a platform from a marketing standpoint for them. And then we have our podcast. We got to get you on the fervent four. Yeah. Show, I would love which it. Which is, uh, it's a, it's a long form podcast, so the founders can can share their message. That's uh, cool. Yeah. What um. What gets somebody? So for people out here who are listening, they're like, "Oh man, like this is the first time I'm actually hearing about you know opportunities to to maybe bring investors into my business." Mm-hmm. And what type of things when when people come to Start Wheel, what types of things get to the top of the, the stack. Right. There's a, every, it's very rare that you're going to ask a business owner, hey, you want to raise some capital or there's right. debt, there's investors, there's all these different options. Pretty much every business owner can put working capital to use. Mm-hmm. Um, and so <laughs> it's, and if they can't, give them 24 hours and they'll figure out a way to be able to do it if, if there's an opportunity for it. So you're thinking there's these huge numbers of people that want, mm-hmm. right, or could use. Um, what gets that person to that top of the of the stack? What gets someone standing out to where it's like, man, you're one of those small percent that yep. this may just happen for you? Yeah. Because it's probably pretty clear the ones that no one's going to look at at all. Well, it's it's... Man, there's so much to that. I mean, sure. there is so much to that. So, I mean, we unpack just a few things. One thing, uh, you know, investors have their categories that they like. Sure. They have their different stages that they like. So, you know, pre-seed, seed, series A, series B, whatever yep. the case is, there's different There's different sweet spots for investors. So, you can't just, you need to know who you're going to contact before you contact. Right. Them. So, that that's a big part. The other, the, uh, other aspect of it is... Investors don't invest in ideas. Right. They, you need a business that's being executed. So yep. the three things that I always are telling founders, you need to have a product, you need to have a team, mm-hmm. and you have to have customers. Yeah. If you don't have those three, you're hurting. You're not ready yet. You're not ready. Well, you are hurting for sure. Yeah. If you're operating and you don't have those three, you're definitely hurting. You, you might be able to get by with two. Right. You know, if you got a great product and a team building a great product, you know, yeah. you just haven't got your customers yet, yep. you might be able to get by, but you need those three things. You just got to get customers before you run out of money. Yeah. So and that, with the, <laughs> which then the very next thing is, is that you, as a founder, you need to have 18 to 24 months of runway. So yeah. You need to know what your monthly burn rate is. How much money am I spending yep. every single month? Divide that number yeah, uh, yeah. By whatever the number is in your bank account, yep. and if you don't have eighteen to twenty four months of runway, your chances you, are super slim you're going to get any money. Yeah, and it's well, yeah, get any money and even and make it to that point. You know, you're gonna right. you're gonna run out. And I think about like right. when I started, you know, off leash, man, the the barrier to entry was very low. You know, I, I spent very little money on a, a couple pieces of the training equipment and. You I was, it, I was, you made it happen. We, 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 we figured it out. If it was right. a big launch point, like we wouldn't have been able to start when we started. There would have been a lot more prep work and financial planning to go into and all that stuff. So I'm very thankful for that low barrier. Mm-hmm. But this industry is not the norm when it comes to that particularly. I mean, if you're talking about software development, if, if you have this idea. I'm going to like, I mean, I've got an idea for a software I want to do. I've been talking about it for two years. Right. And I've talked to different people and stuff like that. I haven't pulled the trigger on it because I was like, man, it's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of resources and it takes me off of the main thing. That's right. And the main thing is what will ultimately fund that idea. And it'll be great. I think I won't spend on it if I don't know. I know. (laughs) Um, But I can't take away from the main thing. Right. 
Because it's going to blow everything up. That's right. The main thing's got to be the main thing. Do you see that a lot with oh, yeah. you know people come in and it's like squirrel, okay I'm squirrel, I'm doing this squirrel. I'm doing yeah. that and now I'm here I'm here I'm yeah. here and it's like we lose focus of the main thing and I've lost focus of the main thing over the last eight years. It happens. It's it's tough. I mean, especially if you get a little you get some of that instant gratification and this little thing over oh, there. Oh my and gosh! Then you start spending time on that and yeah. uh, next thing you know you've you've lost focus. It, yeah, mm-hmm. it's tough. It's tough. It's it, it, yeah, I chase those squirrels. I see those squirrels now, you know, eight and a half, nine, going on nine years into this now. And, and I remember early on, it wasn't that way. It was just solely laser focused, you know, on the training piece. Yeah. And then as we were able to build that team, right, we have the customers and we're continuing to grow with the customers. But then I have the team and more of my, t- I'm creating some margin. My time was now, okay, how do we improve? Mm -hmm. How do I teach more people to do this? But then also, what other uh, verticals can we create to create additional revenue streams with these clients we already have? Um, Or even maybe bring in some other ones that could benefit from the training piece. And kind of where we hit that bump was when I actually did chase the squirrel a little bit. Yeah, And I was like, oh, whoa, 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 time out. Right. You know, I, I'm not, I don't have as much margin as I thought. And we had to dial back and like main things, the main thing. Right. And your customers are going to tell you everything that you need to know. A hundred percent of the time, a hundred percent of the time. And you, I just, I taught, it's funny you say that I got a text last night from a client, new client, really excited to work with a referral, um, a referral from our friends at the scout guide. You, you know about scout guide, yeah. the, the book, yeah. um, we love that. We have great relationships with, with the vendors in there and the publishers. And this was a referral from, from there and really excited to work with them, get them set up. And they're getting ready to have their dog come in. They had their intro call with one of my team, and they hated every bit of it. The dog's supposed to come in in like a week, and they absolutely hate it. And they texted me last night, and they're like, hey, I'm not comfortable doing mm-hmm. X, Y, or Z. You know, this was going on. I said, hey, I'm getting ready to go into a volleyball game for my daughter. Can we connect in the morning? No problem, Josh. Give us a call. So I get on the call with them today. And I'm just like, hey, can you let me know what's going on? Because this isn't something I've heard before. Mm -hmm. And she said all kinds of stuff to me. And a lot of times people say all kinds of things all the time. And there's times you know, is someone just off a little bit? Or is some their validity to their concern? Is it a well-presented complaint that seems reasonable is it pretty specific? Is it, you know, or is this someone who's just blah, 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 right. blah, blah. Yeah, this was not blah, 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 <laughs> blah, blah. And, um, you know, her thing was, I'm really sorry, you know, to say these things to you. And I said, please don't apologize. Right. I Am I frustrated by the things you're telling me? 100%. Am I frustrated with you because you're telling me this? No, not at all. The I have to know these things. Yeah. This is new information to me. I've never gotten feedback like this before. There's a blind spot that I need to address, and this is going to make us better moving forward. It it doesn't matter what I think our reputation is. It doesn't matter how great I think my team is, and they're just home run, home run, home run, right. home run. You learn a lot more from striking out <laughs> than you do from hitting the home run. A hundred percent of the time. Yeah. And it's like, I appreciate it. You know, I, I can't, nothing irks me more than when a client maybe is having a problem or isn't super satisfied with whatever their experience was, but they don't ever tell you and right. they don't give you an opportunity to satisfy, you know, a year down the road, we've reached out through one of our follow-up systems just saying, Hey, How's everything going? Do you, you mind you're interested in leaving a review? Give us some feedback. Yep. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a three star or a one star, or I get an email telling me where I can go and what they hope happens to my kids. And I'm like, what Whoa. the heck? I thought your yeah. golden retriever yeah. was cool. You know, <laughs> <laughs> what happened here? And and this is the stuff. And, and I get on the phone or someone on my team gets on the phone and, hey, when did you reach out to us and let us know you were struggling? When did you, right. you know, email or call? Because we we can pull a record of every phone call that comes in, everything. And it's always in those situations they never did. Yep. They never did. I'm only hearing about it because we're very diligent in follow-up and we want to get feedback. Yep. And it's like 
you just had time this Saturday morning to light me up, but you yeah. never gave a, and maybe you do it publicly, not privately, right? Because now I've irritated you with yeah, a follow some, up. Somebody cut them off. They got right. ticked off enough. They're like, I'm going to show you. Yeah, screw that you. dog guy. I'm ready to give it to him. <laughs> and I'm like, why? You never even let me know. Yeah. When we tell you, we're a resource to you for life. If there's a problem, let us know. That's part of what you bought. Right. Like we're right. here. Yep. But you don't let us know. So I super appreciated this person. Saying, Josh, we're good. We're cool. We uh, we would just prefer to switch to this type of setup. Mm -hmm. It's a setup we can honor and do, and so it's no problem. I hate that that was her experience. I can assure you she's going to have an excellent experience moving right. forward, yep. and I can assure you that that other part's going to be addressed internally with that team member, um, and it's a good learning lesson for the team as a whole that we got to put out. But to your point, the customers will let you know. They will let you know, but, man, it's a pain in the ass when they – let you know so far down the 100%. line where you can't respond and address it. And I feel like a lot of business owners, excuse me, a lot of business owners, um, they get so offended yeah. when they get feedback that isn't you're amazing. Right. And I don't need people to tell me it's amazing. I shouldn't have somebody working for me if they're not amazing. And if they can't do the job at the level I do it, they shouldn't be here. So why do you get offended when someone gives you feedback that you're not? Like sometimes there's just people who won't be happy. Yeah. But is it reasonable? Is there a blind spot you're missing that you need to pay attention to? Um, what are kind of your thoughts on that? Do you feel like entrepreneurs, I mean, the, uh, small business owners, I feel like take it so personally. They do. And, and and so that's like part of my litmus test stuff. You know, when I'm talking to people, if I, I value my time, super value. Yeah, I mean, that's just right. the most precious thing that I have. I need to be able to have parties with the family. That's right. Of course. Kind of thing. So, yeah, I mean, when, when I'm, Talking to them, I mean, they have to be coachable. They have to understand, you know, that hey, these we're going to lean into some discomfort. Right? How do you how do you feel about that? Yeah. And then we'll continue to move forward. But yeah, some people, man, they struggle with it, and it's just like you're not going to improve your business unless you're able to hear that kind of stuff. That's right. You know, because because what you do great got you to where you are right now. That's right. What got you here is not going to get you there. Uh-huh. It's the stuff. We talk about that all the time, don't we, Jonathan? And, you know, and it's fixing the things that you're not doing well and continuing to do and build upon right. the things that you right. do do well that propel you to those next points. Right. So you've got to have a product. You've got to have a team. You've got to have customers. You've got to be coachable. What else are you guys looking for when, when you consider – Someone's coming to you talking about this, and now you're helping them put together something and point them to the right people to maybe present this to. Yeah. You know, what other things do you guys look for? Uh, total addressable market. We call it TAM. Yep. Uh, there's only so much violin oil that you can uh, sell to people. So <laughs> right. you need to make sure. That, so that's why I like SAS, super scalable. Yep. You can uh, touch a lot of people with the same amount of effort. So uh, what, what is that market? Yeah. How do you plan on... on uh, Getting into that market, how are you going to grow into that market? Uh, having a clear plan how to do that, really, really important. Um, I mean, every every layer you pull back, there is so much to it. Yeah, sure. So the, the difference between users and customers. Right. Someone may say, hey, man, I got 500 users. Okay, well, 500 users at uh, 100 bucks a month, you know, so... What's your monthly revenue? Right. Well, well it's still at zero. Well, but you got 500 <laughs> users. Right, yeah. So yeah, you, users, your customers are paying you money. Right, users that's are right. Getting it for free. So yeah. if you if you set up a special saying, "Hey man, I'll, we're training dogs for free," I would be lined up around. Absolutely, the yeah. You know, so you can't go to investor, uh, you know, saying that we've got uh, five hundred customers and uh, who aren't willing to pay for any of it. Pay, but man, they're lined up. That's right. So you you have to. You have to cross that threshold. If, sure. you, if you're doing some initial alpha testing or beta testing right. and, and users are jumping on there for free so that you can get feedback that you should be listening to, yes. that's one thing. But you've, uh, you've got to be able to convert those into actual paying customers. So, right. And it's really easy for someone to say, yeah, I'll pay 10 bucks a month, 50 bucks a month, whatever the case is, and be like, all right, pay your first month. And then right. do they open their wallet? You know, that's uh, that's the next question. 100%. You know, it's, that's so funny you give that example. I talked to the sales team all the time about this. I'm like, my, my background, you know, what I come from, I had to create any opportunity 
to sell. There wasn't people calling me for my expertise. In this world that we're in now, every time my phone rings or an email comes in the inbox, they have a problem we can solve. Mm -hmm. That's why they reached out to us. And so I'm just like, what? what kind of blessings are this, you know, coming to us? But it's just because they're, they're making that phone call, though, doesn't mean they're cut uh, until right. they pay. And that's where it's like, you know, this much time in, there's history and growth. And it's like, oh, this is kind of a proven deal, mm-hmm. you know, that this is just this is a legitimate thing. It's not, hey, I train dogs real good. Yeah. Bring your dogs to me so I can train them. And well, people, and it, unfortunately people can run out there and do it. It's like, yeah, I have a dog training business. I train dogs. Well, I've been training dogs for three years. Okay. How many, like, but how many dogs have you trained? Well, three, got three clients, three years, three clients. That's a tough, I would say you don't have a, a, a dog training business. You know, you might know and right. learn a lot about dog training and gone to a lot of seminars and you may be an incredible dog trainer. Yep. But you can't necessarily say you have the dog training business. You got 500 users, 100% of which don't pay anything. You don't have a subscription-based business yet. That's right. Where, where, What gets that trigger to where now they're that customer and it's revenue generating? Yeah. And now how do you keep that recurring? That's right. What's the loss rate on that? Like the, And no one pays attention to any of those, yeah. those things. And it's hard... I feel like it's hard for for founders a lot of time if they were on that tactical side of the business and they're going into the ownership piece. I had to learn to become obsessive with the numbers. And the numbers don't lie, man. They never do. They and never It's so easy. It's like in school, right? You take a test, you're like, "Man, I, dude, I did so good on that test." Then you get your grade back and you're like, Man, what just happened there? Story you know? of my life. Yeah. <laughs> and, but then the the test that you take and you're like, man, I don't know how well I did that. You knew it enough that you knew which questions you got wrong. Right. So you, I, I'll talk to a founder and be like, hey, man, how's, how's, how's revenue going this month? Oh, man, we're killing it, man. We're having, you know. But then when they look at that bank statement, it's a whole mm-hmm. different thing. I mean, it just, the yeah. numbers don't lie. I try to have conversations. I mean, our, we are very fortunate, very blessed. Our, our organization is built a little differently than most dog training companies out there. And, um, you know, when I'm talking to people about an off month and things like that, like I try to be like, I know that there's people out there that would kill to have a year of our bad month. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. And like, I appreciate that, but it doesn't matter because that's their organization. And this, this is mine and the support required to, to operate the, the size that we've become you know, there's support staff, there are families there, you know, that payroll piece is very different when it was me in the backyard, you know, just training dogs by myself and it it looks and feels different. And so I've had to, I'm passionate about the numbers and I'm passionate about the business side equally to the, the training piece. But, you know, my day is consumed by nothing but data, right? I know every lead from every source. I know the conversion rates. I know the cost to get that lead. I know the numbers from my sales team of the people they've talked to, to who's converted. Like I can tell you anything about anybody and you have to be able to know that to get a general idea of health. We can, we can have all the, uh, yeah. Or an investor. You can have all the revenue in the world. If your costs though, are 99% of it, you're not, you're you're not making any money. That's right. And people like, Oh yeah, we're killing it. And you talked about that bank statement reference. Like, (sighs) I mean, not where can we trim some stuff? Right. And so it's, I mean, this year has definitely been a lot of lessons learned that even on our end, I mean, this has been a weird year for us and, you know, growth still, and but it, it's different than it has been historically. And I'm like, man, like this is, we've got to adjust some stuff. We need to dial back on some things that we've gotten accustomed to doing and, And from an operation standpoint, because those margins aren't there. And from the outside, it's like, oh, well, yeah, there's still a ton of dogs coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what it, that number that was big 24 months ago, that the team it took to support that is different than it is now. 100%. And people get lost in that. If you don't know those numbers, they can catch up to you really quick. That's right. But one of the things that stands out about you, Josh, is what, what you know your why. 
You're yeah. passionate about this. You know, other some people are like, man, you know, why do you want to get into this business? It's like, man, I, we can make a lot of money. Right. It's like, that's the wrong answer. Yeah. Because as soon as you have that bad day, as soon as you get punched in the face that first time, you're going to chase after that next opportunity that could make you a lot of money. Yep. So what's your why? Tell yep. me why you're doing this. 100%. So when you have that bad day, that's what's going to get that why is that's what's getting you out of bed in the morning. No, a hundred percent it is. And, and that's that big gut check for people. Yeah. And that's what's like, Oh, screw this. I'm out. I'm going back to, that's right. I'm going back to the job working for the man. I'm just going to let somebody pay me. Yep. That's way less stressful. I mean, it's just a different type of stress. You know, it, it's, and that's where people got to figure it out. And it's like, man, I got this idea, that's Tim. I want to start this business. This is what yeah. we're doing. I need to raise money. I got to do all these things. And I think it's so important what you're doing when you're having these conversations with people. Do they have the metal to get through that piece? Because it's going to suck. Oh, yeah. It's going to suck. People, and because people say, man, it's like, man, you just play with dogs all day. No, I have a stroke three to four times a day <laughs> stressing about like what, what we're going to do. That's what I do all day. My team gets to play with a lot of puppies, but they're working their faces off, yeah. you know, doing these things. And you, <laughs> your point to you've got to have that why and no. Even if you are crystal clear on your why, there's going to be days where you're like, it, it, no, 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 no. This isn't worth it. And you just got to recognize that's a moment and go in because if it's not crystal clear, we talked about this earlier. If that vision is not crystal clear, you can't fight through yeah. the crap storms. Yeah. And yeah, I'll, I'll, I want to bet on myself, man. I mean, I know how to ask you. Yeah. Yeah. You, you get the job. That used to be the security back in the day, but mm-hmm. now, I mean, everyone's looking to trim. That labor force, yep. improve that, uh, cut the top line so they can uh, improve on the bottom line. You don't know where you stand in that mix. Nope. I, I, I want to bet on myself. I know if I have to get after it, and, and yeah. I'm going to get after it. it <laughs> bet on yourself. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. And, and I think there's so many opportunities for people to – build the confidence to bet on themselves. There's so many resources out there, yeah. whether it's, it's, it's books, podcasts, um, organizations they can become a part of. Like there's people are so fearful from taking that step. And it is scary guys. Like for anybody listening, like it is a scary thing to do, but you're not alone in these processes. And that's the thing about, that's great about start wheel. You don't have to be by yourself. Yeah. It, it didn't celebrate failure, man. I mean, mm-hmm. you cannot be afraid to fail. Yeah. I mean, you, you cannot be afraid to fail. Yeah. We, <laughs> I made a bad bet earlier this year on, on something really, it was just like perfect storm of timing and it, man, it hurt, it hurt. And it was, I've been very patient for a really long time. And earlier this year I'd lost patience and made a couple decisions to, to expedite some stuff. And it was bad, man, it was a bad move. And I'm like, shit, man. Okay. Well, what did we learn from this? How are right. we going to fix this and get out of this? And not do it again. And, and not do it again. And it, it's just what it was. And, and the thing was, you know, it was, it's patience. And even at this stage of the game, right. you still have to practice patience. Dude, we live in the and world of instant gratification, We man. We do. Oh. And it's so easy. And I'm like, okay, well, I got this in process. This is what's going to do. That's probably this amount of time out. Well, I can do this in the gap time, and that's fine. That's no big deal. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, and, and you figure it out, and you right. go. But you talked about, hey, you know, when you come in and you start taking that funding, that investor funding and stuff, setting that treadmill to 10, and you just got to go. When you get your business up and going, and it's operating, and you're bringing people on, and you have that t- team, investors or not, that joker's set to 10. Yep. And there's a period of time where you're going – until you start to get to the place where you can replace yourself in all of those things. And just cause you're not running at 10, you better be compensating well, the people that are right. Cause to, to operate, there's a group of people who are going to be running a collective group of people who are going to be running at that 10 to operate. And if you're going to grow and you're going to scale, that's the reality. One of the things we talk about a lot is what points enough. And it's not enough revenue, right? It's enough impact. If I believe I'm actually making an impact in what we're doing on families, on communities, for dogs, if that's truly what I believe, which it is what I believe, Mm -hmm. what's enough? What's enough? 
Well, ah, we've helped enough families. Is every family helped? Right. I mean, the answer is no. Right. Well, then how can I be satisfied if I truly believe we can help more and we can do it better? We need to teach more people how to do this so that we can effectively impact more people. Well, then you don't get to slow down. That's right. Until you create something and a grouping of people that can take your place. Wild, right? It is wild. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Not everybody is built for that. Right. So many people have ideas, but you don't really give a crap about that idea. It is a great idea. And maybe you just need to find somebody right. to bring in with you. That's, you know, that, that's your <laughs> legacy, man. I mean, like, that's what you're there for. Right. And, you, and you're, you, every single day, it's just part of life. That's it. And that's where the betting on yourself piece right. is so important. But if you're not fired up like that, you you can't just nonchalant go into oh, this yeah, stuff. I don't yeah. care what your industry is, what your product is, what your service is. You can't fake it. No. You better be all in on it. And and you have to have fun doing it. I mean, there's, 100%, there's yes. Some, when you're having fun, I mean, that's just contagious. Everybody yes. gets it. They feel it. And it's so much easier to buy in right. than someone who's just operating out of fear, man. That yes. Just, dude, people sense that. Miles away, hundred percent. I mean, I will say we have uh, we we've had more fun days around here than I've been allowing lately. But you know, it's just one of those deals. Again, seasonal. Yeah. And you just you can't get stuck in ruts. You can't get stuck in like you you figure out. Sometimes there's seasons where you have to like hit pause a little bit and be like, okay, we need to reflect and learn. Right. Now we've addressed it. Now let's get going again. And but it's got to be. I tell people every day, man, we don't work at a bank. You know, shorts, flip flops. I don't care, man. Like the, right. we're we're not working at a bank. Relax. This is supposed to be fun. Dog shouldn't be stressed out. You shouldn't be stressed out. Like there's so many millions yeah. of other things you can yeah, go. That's, that's a that's an interesting go point. do. Yeah, yeah, dogs can sense that more than humans can. Yeah, I'm like, you know, why your dog is stressed out? Because you're pissing me off. You're <laughs> annoying me, trainer. If you're getting on my nerves, I know you get on this dog's nerve. Right. Lighten up. Yeah. Just relax. Yeah. I okay. Life is going on, and how 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 much does this apply to everything? Everybody has stuff going on in their life. Doesn't mean you got to bring it in here. That's right. You got to compartmentalize. But everybody and your your being off a of social piece has me thinking. I'm like, man, I need to just turn all this junk off. Everybody just feels this need to share everything, and they don't stop it at social. They bring it in here, and my team doesn't really do this, but like, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure they do to a certain extent. But everybody's got to bleed everything out to everybody their clients, co workers. Nobody yeah, cares. That whole social thing, man, I'm just torn because I, it's a lot of times, man, I'm just, dude, I'm grinding. I, yeah. am, I am just heads down working. And next thing I know, man, I'm like, dude, it's five o'clock. Where'd the day go? Yeah. I, yeah and, there's another part where I've had people uh, come and talk to me. or like, "Man, you're you're like you guys are borderline putting us in depression because your life is so good." And I'm like, "That's not my intent either." Right? You yeah. Know? So I don't know, man. But at the same time, it, from a business side, it's it's really really important to, to build it's that super brand. Important. And it's just like, how do you balance all that stuff out? I haven't I I've not figured it out. I will tell you that, um, yeah, I don't know the balance piece of it. I know that if it wasn't for our businesses. I probably would not be as active um, as we are on it. Um, I try to be really disciplined in not getting caught in scrolling. Yeah. You know, but I've also, knowing that I am going to do some mind melt and just, okay, I need 10 minutes to not think. I'm just going to go scroll. Right. I've also been very intentional over the last two and a half years to where my feeds are filled with things I want to see. That's right. And so in the things I interact with, like it's pretty dialed in. I don't see drama and BS and stuff like that. It's just not people I engage with or follow. And so when I'm going on there, I'm seeing wins. I'm seeing friends of mine winning in their yep. businesses and their families. I'm seeing, um, you know, uh, uh, people that I look up to and admire and, and what are they doing, you know, in their businesses, uh, people who are places where I would aspire to be. 
You know, what do their days kind of look like? Right. How do they how do they lead their teams? Um, how do they interact with people? What type of messages are are they putting out and sharing? And so that's the stuff that I see. Now, before that, though, it was just a freaking Ringling Brothers event, man. It was just constant chaos. And I'm just, I get messages. Hey, are, are we not connected anymore on Facebook? I'm like, first of all, what are you looking for that you even notice that? Right, right. But, no, we're not. But because you're politically insane and, you know, all, like, I just don't want to see it. I, I just don't either. care. Yeah. I love you. I wish you nothing but success. But I can't. I just, I can't. Right. Or, you know, whatever it may be, it's just always negative. Especially, I mean, talk about being on a treadmill and setting it. That's, that's in a 20. That's just, dude, my mind can't, I just, I can't function like yeah. that, dude. I, I need a, there's just need a too, There's just too much. So when I need a, a jolt, I'll jump on and I'll get some content that feeds me. There's never not a time where I go on there and there's something of, of value that I'll see. And maybe it's a, a, a picture of my godson. You know, from them going, you know, getting pumpkins. Maybe it's, you know, a, a, a big time business guy, you know, sharing some some knowledge or something. But yeah. there's some jolt that I get to where I can get back and going. Yeah, I think that, you know, I, I probably needed to spend more time to dial everything in because I got to the point where it was like, you, you meet that friend and you're like, uh, man. I shouldn't be this unhappy or this disappointed after we hang out. That's just toxic. <laughs> right. And, yeah. And, and social to me got to that point where I'm like, when I'm on it, I'm less happy than I was before I yeah. got it. So I just need to eliminate that from my life. I probably should have dialed it in, but man, I just. I no, just it's, did, uh, it, I don't mind the cold Turkey piece. I think it's great. A, a bunch of my friends and, and I probably do need to implement this. They have it set to um, timing. Like it's yeah. scheduled within yeah. the phone. Where there's a period of time of the day where it will allow them access and right. it caps them out at 15 minutes. Yep. You know, and they almost did like a lot of people do with their kids, but they did it for themselves. Yeah. They're like, this I, is no value yeah. to me. So yeah. why would I do this? I can check in on my business pages, but I don't need to spend any time anywhere else. Right. Yeah. Um, I never installed Facebook on my phone. It's been yeah. years. And uh, I mean, that just. Yeah. And I say I need them for business, but the reality is I don't. I don't even. I don't manage the Facebook pages like somebody else does all the posts and all that <laughs> stuff. I don't reply to the messages. I I should probably just remove it. Um, that would probably be the good thing. I mean, there's a lot of intuitive ways. I will say now, like you can remove apps from just your home screen and not oh, like yeah. completely from the phone. Um, yeah. My two my two big rules are. Uh, delete the notifications like don't have any notifications because oh, yeah. all that is is just dopamine and serotonin and dopamine yeah. and serotonin just want more of themselves so right. every time you get a notification you want to see that and then the other thing that i do is once i see something that i don't like from you it's no issue i just unfollow you and it's right. a one one opportunity you get one chance and once yeah. i hit the unfollow i'm not going to go back yeah. and then you just don't see that anymore because i got the same way of getting unhappy every and, time and, i was and, there there's so many people that you meet out in, in public, right? And yeah. you're like, man, I like these folks. I really, really yeah. like them. And then you make you make that fatal mistake becoming <laughs> yeah. friends on social media. And you're like, man, I didn't, I don't like you as much as I thought I was. Let's going not to. take our relationship here. <laughs> now I got to see how you think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't want to know how you think. And that's why I really love Instagram. That's why I really, really love Instagram. It's such a it, it, people aren't typically as uh, dramatic on there. And it's, it's such an easier interaction. Um, but because there, I, I believe fully, there is a lot of value to so many businesses and entrepreneurs in that social, uh, profile, who, who, who you are on there, who do you present yourself as, yeah. what is the message that you convey? The, the problem is so many people don't use it in that way. And, and honestly, business owners are not. People do not put value in the fact that, guys, this is your resume. This is your public yeah. resume. If you're applying for a job and you think people aren't looking at you on social, if you're looking for investors and you think potential investors aren't going and researching you, not just through LinkedIn, but on Facebook and Instagram or whatever else, you're insane because yeah. they're going to vet you. And it's more than the fifteen ninety nine background check to make sure you're not a sex offender. Like it, we want to know, and you, you, no one's intentional with that stuff. We have a pretty set, you know, policy. It's like guys, you do not connect with clients on Facebook. 
I don't want you to do it. Mm. Um, I really appreciate if you don't do it. I want you to honor that. Right. I mean, I right. can't tell people what to do, but I tell them my preference is you do not do that. Because here's the thing. I don't care that you're into guns and you want to go hunting and you killed the biggest deer of your life and you got pictures of it, you know, dressed and field dressed and all that. That's cool. But now the client who's dropping their puppy off with you in three weeks is looking to learn more about their trainer. Right. And they're super anti-gun and, you know, you know, hate hunting and, you know, whatever. Now it's like, oh, I can't have my dog with that type of per- Huh? What? Yeah, it's getting what, messy. Fast. What are you sending the dog to us for? You're sending the dog to us, you know, to, to get our professional expertise and yeah. what we're known for in our reputation as we do. It has nothing to do with personally they like to go hunt. Like, that's the dumbest thing ever. But people will make decisions on that. So whatever the, the upside is to that client connection, it is not worth the potential downside. So I say, hey, if you want to connect and be active on social with your dog stuff, create a training Instagram. And push, you know, clients there where they can connect you to. And I think that's a great idea. And that's just where you're putting pictures and videos of dogs and all. It doesn't need to be personal stuff. Um, My stuff over the years has transitioned a little bit to where I got a blend. It's probably more personal things on my social. And, um, you know, the podcast is a big part of my social presence and things. And dogs are in there as well. But it is heavier family and stuff. But with the brand that we built over the last nine years... I think it's really important that people know who I am. Yeah. And I it's it's like because they're everybody who works for me is an extension of me still. We're not a Walmart, we're not even close to anything like that. We are a small business. Yep. Built on a reputation that I started. And they 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 have to know who's behind this thing. Yep. And that is an easy visible way for people to to connect and do so build trust but i'm also not out there you know being but i'm not crazy anyway you know it's just you just got to be mindful of of stuff and you know that was a big concern of the podcast i wanted to start the podcast for a long time but i was always very hesitant to like well one is anybody to listen turns out a lot of people listen um two who gives a crap what i say i don't know if anybody gives a crap but they listen um three though oh man what if i say something somebody doesn't like right right but there's been enough lessons learned over the years where I'm like, we can help some people. And we've Amen. been through enough failures yep. where it's like, if we can help somebody each week, yeah, avoid a mistake we made, right? Yeah. I, you know, and I don't know if it's an age thing or what the deal is, but I feel like the older I get, the easier it is for me to be show that vulnerability. Uh-huh. I, I don't need to prove anything to anybody at this point yeah. anymore. You know, it's like my, my trajectory in life is pretty much set where it's uh, right. And hey, if you need to use me as an example to learn from, have at it. You know, we're we're good. Yeah, serve. That's literally what you're doing. It's serving. Yeah. And helping people, not that they're not gonna have troubles getting going, but if you can help them avoid some of the pitfalls right. that, that you ran into or other people on your board or other people within that start wheel community can help with, um, that's a huge, huge thing. Yeah. And why? Something we were talking about earlier and we spoke about before is there's no unique problem. Any problem that someone's going to run into, somebody else has ran into it before or a a variation similar enough to where the solution is readily available. But are you burying your head in the sand and trying to figure it out all yourself? You don't need to recreate the wheel. It's Mm -hmm. already, yeah, you've got it. In my 20s, you talked about getting older. You know, in my 20s, man, (laughs) we could have done a lot of stuff differently. Ego wise, though, man, oh my gosh, like you can't ask for help. You can't do any of that mess. And every once in a while, that'll still sneak up on me in my 40s. Um, But it is a heck of a lot easier to share and teach a little bit and hope someone can pick up from it because there's pain in those failures. And the pain is significant enough to where you're like, man, if I can help one person. Right avoid this or skip this step on their path. That's right. You feel like you're doing something good. 100%. And that's 100% of what you guys are doing every day over there. It's my goal every day. That's what uh, that's what gets me out of bed every day. That's really incredible to me. Um, so how do people learn more about Startwheel? How do they connect? Yeah, startwheel.org. Okay. 
and we're pretty much at the, we're at Start Wheel on all the social platforms. Oh, nice. Okay. And just jump in. I open up my calendar and everybody. Okay. Right? I'll give you thirty minutes. Go in my calendar. Like, yeah. Yeah. Book some time. We'll talk, and I'll help you get uh, help you get connected. That's awesome, and that's not a, a lot of it is Hampton Roads, but not necessarily Hampton Roads, you know, based. So if you're listening, if you've got stuff that you're working on, you're in that startup phase, um, maybe you're a couple years in and, you know, you have the product, you have the team, you have the customers. And now it's like, man, how do we get to that next level? What are steps? You know, you're in that phase where you want to reach out to Tim and just say, Hey, w- what do you think of this? What, what kind of decisions, what kind of things do I need to start putting together to to create an opportunity yep. to have discussions with people who might be interested in helping me take this to the, the the next level that I see for my business? Or what pitfalls do I really need to consider before taking on investors or looking right. to take on investors? Because I think a lot of people would be very interested in that piece until they find out accountability and limitations put on what they've had as free decisions for so long. That's something I don't think people think about at all. No, they don't. And it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, because it's your baby. That's right. And now it's a lot of y'all's baby. <laughs> and not everyone's going to think that baby's the prettiest baby they've ever seen. No, not at all. And because people look at, and, and man, what huge value, though, in having those they're biased but completely unbiased perspectives of an investor. They're seeing things in ways completely different than you have from inception. Right. Hopefully, ideally. And it's super easy to give investors and like, oh, man, they, those guys don't know what they're talking about. Right. But then a couple months go by and they're like, you, you realize man, they were right. Yeah. I had you know, this. These things were off. I needed to tweak some things. I needed sure. to talk to a couple more customers and get some feedback. Cause to your point earlier, you know, the investors, they have sectors where they're comfortable putting their money. You're comfortable putting you, you get excited about tech and you're comfortable in tech, but you know, tech, Yeah. you have experience in tech. So this is where you look to invest in and work with people in. It excites you passionate about it. Probably the same way with other investors. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like, it's betting. Yep. I, I, I like to make the, most educated bet that I possibly can. So right. why would I make a stupid bet that I don't know anything about? Right. I, I, I want to make sure I'm making the best, safest yeah. bet possible. Tim's out here talking about, you know, loves tech, invests in tech and stuff like that. Farmer Joe shows up. It's like, hey, man, I got these cows. Hell yeah, I'm all in on these cows. <laughs> well, what can you help us do? I don't have a fat clue about cattle. I don't know anything about the milking process. <laughs> I mean, it's tough. I mean, there's a lot of lessons to be applied, though, you know, across all businesses, because I mean, something silly, but I'm thinking about sports betting and you're saying don't make a bet that you don't know. And I do that every evening, just every putting evening. money on teams that That's I'm just where they get you. It's exactly where they get you. It's exactly where they get you. John, Jonathan likes to bet on the ponies. Oh, never the ponies. Parlays, <laughs> parlays. The only time I've ever made money betting like significantly was on horses. Which was totally luck and total right. total random. I mean, I've made money in the casinos before, but we went to. Um, it's really funny. I was super poor, and we went to West Virginia with some Kelly and Kevin, mm-hmm. and um, I don't know. I think we all took like twenty bucks, and we're like, let's just play these slots real quick. I'd won like two hundred on the horses, which was a huge win to me. I'm like, oh my gosh. I was like, all right, let's just you know. Do like five, maybe we said five bucks. I think it was five dollars on these slots, and so they just went to go play some slots, and I have to walk around. I gotta feel it, right? And I sit down at this machine, and I'm not the guy who's gonna milk five dollars. I want to find the five dollar machine. I'm right. one pull wonder. Like <laughs> I'm either hitting or I'm not. I'm not wasting time with this BS, man. And I hit. I won like seven hundred some odd dollars off that slot machine. And I took us to this restaurant on the way home. It was so fun. I'm like, let's stop at that place. And it wasn't any like crazy restaurant. It was probably was like a nice, a nicer Applebee's, right? In my mind, it's like Ruth's Chris, but it was probably a nicer Applebee's for that the, time frame of life. The macaroni bar and grill where it's like just <laughs> yeah, nice enough. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> it might have been something like that too, where you're like, man, this is prime. But back then, that was prime. And I was like, I'm gonna get all of our dinner. I'll pay for it. Like, you don't gotta do that. You don't gotta do that. I said, no, man, I didn't come with this money. 
I'm still going to take a lot home. Yep. Let me buy dinner. So we did that. And it was all at those stupid horses. I won a couple hundred on some random horse bet. And then that five bucks in that slot machine. We were in Vegas last year. Same thing. Three or four slot machines I sat down in. And my buddy's getting so irritated. I'm not irritated. It's just they're sitting down playing like dollars and like the penny machines or the nickel machines. And they're just nursing these $5 bills. And I sit down and I'm like, I put like a 50 in. And it's like $10 max bet, bah, max bet, max bet. And then I lose, I lose. But if I won, I'm having four or $500 pops. Yeah, what do they say? Scared money don't make uh, money. Uh, scared Amen. money Amen. doesn't make a damn dime. And, yeah, we definitely – and that's a thing, too, where confidence will kick your ass. If you're out there getting started in your business and stuff, I suffer from this uh, condition where losing it doesn't necessarily scare me. Because, I, like you said, Tim, bet on yourself, right? I'm confident that I can go out and, and create more. That's not always the wisest way to, to function, all right? But scared money does not make money. And if, if you're out here building a business, it, it, yes, you got to be responsible. You got to have a plan. You got to know your numbers. But you, you're never going to grow. You're never going to be able to scale if, if you're not willing, if you're risk adverse, to the extreme. Right. The whole concept behind what you're doing is risk-based. Like, you're betting on yourself. There's no one there to catch you. There, Don't get drunk on that feeling of the risk, but, like, you've got to be okay with it. Yep. Bet on your damn self. Yeah, just that idea of, like, betting on yourself and not on anybody else is really applicable in a lot of walks of life, including my degenerate sports gambling. So I figured <laughs> I'd bring that up. <laughs> But it's it does though it just applies to everything. But you you have to have that that confidence that edge. But you it comes back to too you got to have that passion in what that idea is or that product is or that service that concept. Like you have to be passionate, and that passion creates that um, that confidence. If there is no passion and you're just running full speed, it's arrogance. And there's a big difference between arrogance oh, yeah. and confidence and when you p combine that passion with the confidence and you have clarity in that vision i mean these are things that that, that i would be interested in looking at yeah. you get that individual I mean, it's like you're building a rocket right mm -hmm. and that capital is rocket fuel but you, and the whole idea is man you put that fuel in the rocket you want it to go up and into orbit right you don't right. want that thing to go crash and burn no. so you you got to make sure all your stuff is in place, man. A lot of yeah. things got to go right. And that's where start wheel can really come in and help connect people with that stuff and, and get them with, with the right plan, yep. you know, moving forward. And you got people who are, are there to support you. You know, guys, if you're listening and thinking about reaching out that are in it for the right reasons and they're looking to help create opportunities, you know, for you based on what you've built in our building. And so it, it's cool. If you didn't know there's resources like this out there, they're absolutely there for you. And, um, you know, I vouch for Tim. I've known Tim a long time, and he's a real, real good dude. And um, you can count on him giving it to you straight, too. And, you know, it's like, hey, yeah, this is great. These are things we want to do. Hey, this is cool. This is some stuff you probably want to work on. And, right. you know, maybe let's chat in a year or two. Um, and you're not, you're not ready yet. Don't take that as a blessing when someone tells you that. Honestly, guys, when you're listening. Because a lot of you will try to force something. And you'll never get off the ground and you'll lose your shirt trying. Yeah. And you got someone who's experienced and has been in the game and has those opportunities. And they're saying, Hey, wait a bit. This is the plan. Right. And then jump. Like you got to take that wisdom. And a lot of times it's not. No, it's just not now. Uh huh. Yeah. And so the thing that, that a lot of uh, founders miss out on, it's like, Hey, send out monthly or quarterly updates. Mm -hmm. Inventory. Everybody that you talk to, and then every month, every quarter, send an update. And then you don't know what month or what quarter is going to hit, whether you, that investor or that person that you want to connect with, yeah. you finally scratch that itch. Now you're in the game. Yeah. But if you just put tuck your tail between your legs and never contact that person again, you just lost. Yeah, 100%. So. Cause, and, even, and you never know who it's going to be either. No. And differentiating between that no and not yet is huge. So often people hear not yet, or they're told not yet, but they hear no. Well, they didn't believe in me. 
they don't think it's a good, and that's not what people are saying to them. Just not yet. And typically not yet is followed with probably some guidance. Right. And if you're willing to receive that, which clearly you're open to receiving investment. So you're, 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 you can't be open to receiving investment and not open to receiving feedback and input. I mean, what if you were at 45 customers and that investor just wanted to see 50? You're yeah. only five short. You're just one yeah. monthly update away from hitting it, but, yeah. you, but you just gave up. And Or there is the person who, you know, you got not yet from a lot of people and then you got nothing from a bunch of others, but you are staying connected and you're sending out those updates. And there's going to be people who are investors who are like, oh, wow, that – I didn't see that coming. I didn't think that individual had it in them or that group could pull that off. And they went from 500 users to 750 subscribers. Oh, I didn't see that coming. You know, and how many users are they at now? Now they're at 1,500 users, 750 subscribers. Oh, this is a very different thing we're looking at now. And now somebody who maybe wasn't interested is, but not if you receive initial feedback as a, and, and spite and, you know, and all those, it's like, well, I'm, I'll just make it happen. Well, maybe so, but what, what are you taking from that feedback? You can't be open to investment if you're not open to feedback. And a lot of people get that twisted too, I that's think. Right. So that's cool. So if you could give one practical piece of advice, Tim, as we wrap up for entrepreneurs getting, getting going, those founders, we're starting out, whether it's a new concept or their new take on an existing type of product or software, whatever it is, what's, what's one practical thing everybody early on in the process should be thinking about that you feel like everybody misses out on? Everybody misses out on. That's or, a big, or a big number misses yeah, out Yeah, a lot of people, man, they give up too soon. And uh, you have to have the energy. Mm-hmm. You, you've, it's, if you believe in yourself, you're betting on yourself, and you're solving the right problem, something that you're passionate about, you can't give up too soon. Yeah, that's good. That's good. You got to stay on it. Just keep going. That's right. Just keep going. Yeah, that's huge. So many people stop, and they're so close. But when you've been going for a while, and it's a struggle, you're like, I'm never going to make it, and it's just that next corner. That's right. It's just that next corner you got to get to. So you just got to keep going, guys. Look, one last thing I'll mention. So Tim is a big-time runner, like big-time runner. He has this ridiculous um, streak going. What What is the number of days that you've ran in a row? As of t- this recording today, it's 3,064 days in a row. <laughs> 3,064 days. And I asked him this earlier, what quantifies as a run? And he said has to be at least two miles. And so for 3,064 days in a row, as of today, my man has ran at least two miles. Yeah. The only time I've ever done two miles is post-marathon. Right, because my man here is a Boston marathoner twice, two-time, twice. right? Yeah. That's awesome. And that was a really cool thing, too, as you went through that and narrowly missing, but you kept going. All that stuff, man, there's so much business-related stuff. We got to do segment two just on that. Yeah, that's why I'm teasing a little bit right here. dude. I mean, it's just like getting after something for 3,000 days in a row, man. Uh You got to do the hard work every single day. Yeah. And so, like, if someone wants me to work with them or, or help them, be like, hey, have you ever done a 5K? You've ever done a 10K? Yeah, show me that you've developed a plan, right. stuck to a plan, and accomplished something. Mm-hmm. What something. Have, what, have, what have you done? Yeah. Tell me. Yeah, it's pretty incredible, and, and we will. And that's why I wanted to kind of tease this at the end, because I do want us to sit down again um, and take that perspective on some things. Because not only has my buddy here ran 3,064 days in a row, um, <laughs> back in the day, we um, and four other people, we um, we did a 200-mile relay from Charlottesville, Virginia to Jamestown. And they're like, Josh, you ain't never ran anywhere. I'm like, no, I ran. And um, I ran a lot, and that was a crazy time. And I was running a lot back then. Um, and there's a lot of stories, and there's a lot of business concepts I'm and sure lessons that, 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 that come that out of that deal. Still smells. It's got to. There's no way that van smells good. <laughs> it, it, it has never been right since because there were the six of us in that van and two drivers. 
Um, God bless Eddie Andel and Mark Rosati. Um, and we did this 200 mile marathon or, uh, relay over what did it take us 27 hours, something yeah. like that. Maybe a little, no, I think it was like 32, whatever it was. Um, but we'll save that for part two nice. and we'll talk about more of these lessons, but we've got some stories and really cool, um, ways to bring them over to business lessons to share. So if you need anything from Tim, check out start wheel, hook them up, uh, look them up there. You can message him. Uh, email is all on there at start wheel on all the socials. And so it's, it's a pretty great resource, whether you're local here in Hampton roads, you know, or anywhere else, you know, for that matter. So we appreciate you listening and we'll catch you next time on the big dog podcast, Tim. Thank you. Thanks, Josh.